Hello, and welcome to 13.5 Transformers. Now, we're getting towards the end of the chapter and the end of the whole course right now. So this is kind of exciting. This is also one of the most important uses of electromagnetic induction. It's one of the main reasons why our electricity that we get from the power plant is in AC. And without further ado, let's take a look at it. What is a transformer? Well, you might tell me it's a robot in disguise. In this case, we're talking about a device that can raise or lower voltage. And AC, well, transformers only work in AC. So again, this is one of the reasons why AC is such a good idea when we're generating power. Here's how it works. It's like a Faraday ring. You can see the picture down here below. Looks a lot like a Faraday's ring. What we have is a coil of wire. on the left, induces, it induces current in a coil on the right. The AC current means that we have a constantly changing field, a constantly changing magnetic field. And if you remember from 13.1, that was the main problem we had with Faraday's ring, was that we were only getting current when the magnetic field changed, which means when we were turning on the circuit or turning it off. Now we don't have to constantly be turning on and off the circuit. We have AC. We're pushing the electrons and pulling the electrons and pushing and pulling, which means that our magnetic field constantly changes, which means we get constant induction over on the other side, which is very, very useful. The frequency of that push and pull stays the same on both sides. But notice that we have a different number of wires, a different number of windings on one side versus the other. And that's going to change the current and the voltage that is induced in the other set of wires. So we've got two types of transformers. We've got a step-down transformer. And what this does is it reduces voltage. When we talk about step-up and step-down, we're always talking about the voltage. So step-down, the voltage goes down. It reduces the voltage. And what that means is that it increases the current. And I'm going to talk about the reason for that in just a second. What a step-down transformer looks like is it has some primary windings. Those are the windings on the, the left. And the primary windings are going to be greater than the number of secondary windings. those are the windings on the right. Okay, I said I'd explain this reducing voltage, increasing current. As we go across a transformer, the power, I'm going to say the power of the primary um, circuit there, is equal to the power of the secondary circuit. The power stays the same. We have conservation of energy. And we're going to talk about that just below. But the power stays the same. Power is equal to VI. So V primary, I primary equals V secondary, I secondary. And that's why if our voltage goes up, the current goes down. <coughs> okay. So we've got step-down transformers that reduces the voltage. A step-up transformer, the exact opposite. 
increases the voltage. And of course that means it reduces the current. Here are primary windings. are less than the secondary windings. So let's take one last look at these pictures up here. If we go down in how many windings we have, we go down in voltage. If we go up, we go up in voltage. So when you look at a picture, you can very immediately tell, are we reducing the voltage, or are we increasing the voltage? Okay. <clears throat> I already mentioned this, but the conservation of energy, our power on one side is the same as the power on the other side. So c energy is conserved, therefore power is conserved. Um, sorry, let me, let me fix that here. The primary power is equal to the secondary power. because power is just the rate of change of energy. Okay, so since the, um, the power is conserved and since power is equal to VI, we can say that VPIP equals VSIS, which I wrote just above as well. And that gives us three very useful equations. We have an equation for voltage. So the ratio of the primary to secondary voltage is equal to the ratio of the number of windings in the primary and secondary circuits. N is the number of windings. Number of windings. Okay, so there's our first relationship. You can see that the ratio of voltages is just equal to the ratio of windings. Similar equation for current but notice that here we have secondary on top and primary on bottom but still primary secondary over here and that's because current goes backwards relative to the voltage and, and the windings so as the windings go up the current goes down and finally we have a relationship between current and voltage, which looks like this. Those are our three equations. So we can take a ratio of windings, a ratio of voltages, a ratio of currents, and very easily find any of the other um, ratios. Let's take a look at a few examples. The first one, a step-down transformer used in an adapter for a laptop has a primary voltage of 120 volts. There are 250 windings in the primary coil and 25 windings in the secondary coil. Calculate the voltage in the secondary coil. Okay. So, we have voltage, we have windings. We can use our equation VP over VS equals NP over NS. We want to solve for the secondary voltage, so I'm going to rearrange a bit. First I'm going to solve for primary voltage. VP equals Vs times Np over Ns. And then finally I can rearrange one more time. I'm going to just draw arrows here. I can rearrange one more time to find the secondary voltage, which is equal to the primary voltage times Ns over Np. And now we can plug in some numbers here. So primary voltage is 120. We have 25 secondary windings over 250 primary windings. You can see that we get 12 volts. Now you can also probably just look at this problem and say we're going from 250 windings down to 25. That means we're dividing by 10. The voltage is affected the exact same way, so we take 120 and divide by 10. We get 12. That's our final answer. This is actually a, a very common example, this, uh, this transformer, because your laptop operates at 12 volts. 
and our electricity in the walls is 120 volts. So this transformation needs to happen. So you all have, when you plug in your laptops, you have a brick between the wall and your laptop. And that's what that brick is. It's just a block of metal that looks exactly like this with a bunch of windings on one side and a bunch of windings on the other to reduce the voltage. And of course, when we reduce the voltage, we're increasing the current. OK, one more example here. A step-down transformer used in the adapter for a cell phone charger has a primary voltage of 120 volts, again, and a secondary voltage of 5 volts. The current in the primary coil is 0.1 amps. We want the current in the secondary coil. OK, we use our relationship here. IS over IP is equal to VP over VS. We can find our secondary current is equal to primary voltage. Oops, sorry, it's equal to the primary current times VP over VS. Here we get 0 0.1 times 120 over 5, and that gives us 2.4 amps. There you go. There's a few problems to work on there. Enjoy those, and I'll see you in the next lesson.